Okay. Welcome to the Kansas 4-H Animal Science webinar series. We're excited to share with you our Sheep Nutrition Edition um, to help all of our 4-H members to properly feed and care for their 4-H uh, market lamb or breeding you projects. And with us today, we have Mr. D Bill Disberger, and I'm going to mute off and Bill, you just go ahead and share your screen and take it away. All right. Thanks, Kelsey. Okay, everybody. Um, I'm not really going to probably have too much on the screen that's probably a, a value, I'll be honest, um, just because I don't really have a screenshot or anything. It, it's more of a discussionary moment that we're going to go and, and work with you guys today because honestly, so much of the world that we are living in in terms of, of getting you ready for taking care of your sheep project depends on your actual own specific project. And so that's where I'm going to focus Um, uh, own project and what you're trying to do so that way um, we're really in the world to go and um, ready to go this summer you know obviously we're in the first week of May that due to some technical difficulties and scheduling conflicts you know we're just now getting this together for us and so with doing that we want to make sure that um, uh, we're still moving forward but at the same time we know some of you are still picking up state fair projects and junior livestock show lambs and potentially royal sheep or maybe are just late to the party I'll be honest I've got a couple of my showmen that I'm working with this year that chose recently in the last two or three weeks to finally get sheep picked out and, and are just now starting so we want to make sure that we can go and um, uh, get you started and, and we're going to so we're going to start from the beginning today a little bit I think as we work with our breeders that we're getting our sheep from, it's one of the first things that we need to do is to to understand some things about that sheep that we're taking off of their property. I, I think that's where some of the misconceptions lie is that, hey, that every sheep is going to work the same and we need to move forward differently because honestly, that's not the case. Um, so I think we need to have some questions that we get armed with as we move forward with our um, individual breeders and our lambs that we're taking from them. So we need to know what amount of feed these sheep are eating. You know, some of them are honestly working with lambs on full feed diets. When you get them, some are already doing rationed out diets. You need to understand that. So that way we know where to start them off at. Uh, we need to know what kind of feed they're getting. And, you know, it's over some simplified, but honestly, you know, the variety of creep feeds that some of us breeders are using are so different. Um, we really need to know where they're at and what they're starting with in terms of that. Hey, Bill, um, yeah. I'm going to interrupt you right quick because we are seeing your browser screen. Oh, goodness. I need to just go back to where I can just, where do I need to get to so I can just see myself because I'm just, not really good. Uh, just quit sharing your screen. No. No. Where did I quit sharing? So down up, either down at the bottom, um, it should be green, or yeah. up at the top, it might say quit sharing screen. I just say it says new share, and then it says sharing. Let's see. Let me see if I can. Just... Here we go. I don't see you, though. Screen now. There you go. We're good. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. That's okay. where I'm not a Zoom person. So we'll we'll apologize for this few first few minutes. So so like I said, I don't really have a, a presentation today in terms for say So with those that are joining now, you, you'll see we need to know some information from our breeders. So we need to know what kind of feed we're using. Um, once again, there's so many different types of creep feeds that different uh, breeders are are incorporating into their their feeding systems so we want to make sure what kind of feed that is the protein percentage like i mentioned amount um, is it brand name feed or is it a co-op feed that they're just mixing on their own um, self and no matter what it is we just need to take all that information in and then use that to make some decisions as we move forward um, and like I said, you know, if it is a, a mix that's coming in a bag, make sure to get a tag from them. I think that's one of the simplest things to do. So that way you can go and, and try to find a feed that's going to hopefully be a good transition base for you. Um, and if you don't have their feed specifically available to you and you're going to use a different brand, 
I always ask to say, hey, is it okay if I grab a sample? Maybe it's 10, 15 pounds of that feed, just so you can actually understand what they're feeding and then use that um, little sample to actually transition them over to whatever diet you're going to be moving them on to. Um, I think another one that's kind of an interesting question that a lot of a lot of young people maybe that are especially new to the project don't ask is, what's the genetic base of this sheep? And what is that going to look like, like moving forward? Because we all know not only different um, uh, breed types, but also different genetic lines uh, develop differently over the summer. And some are earlier maturing, some are later maturing. And if you're not aware of that, um, background of those genetics it's really a good time to do it while you can maybe go look in the breeder's pen and say okay here's some older lambs i can see what they're looking like 30 60 days ahead of mine uh, maybe even the mature females or or the rams that they have around you can take a look at those and, and really see what you're getting into because you know, we have a genetic base now that probably 90% of them goes back to one breeder. And honestly, they use a certain type of feed and their sheep perform well on that. And that's actually why we've transitioned to that feed, especially on creep feed and show feed for our own sheep. But I'm not here for to be a seed uh, to be a feed salesman. That is not my job today. I'm not going to tell you what brand I'm using. I'm not going to make mention of it, nor any other one. That that's not the goal. The goal is to find what works for you and to move forward. But I think if you can start with that simple information from your breeder, then we can move forward and, and go to that next phase. Um, I think the first thing you need to do, and you need to start doing this even in, you know, by the time you pick up your lamb, you're going to have to have some feed in your barn. So you need to pick out your feed. And, and once again, I, I hate to oversimplify this, but there's some things that are, are going to be important to you there. One is logistics. You want to make sure it's a good, consistent feed source. Um, we are lucky for the, the feed type that we use. We have a, a, a salesperson in the area that, that'll get me feed every week. I just put in an order. But if that's not something that you have, you need to make sure you can get one because the worst thing you can do to your sheep is bounce back and forth between a lot of different types of feeds and the little feed trial by doing that to see um, over COVID, we use that as a way to, to try some different feeds out and we could see the performance difference by making those changes. And so every time you change a feed, you could set your sheep back and we don't want to do that. So make sure you got a good, consistent feed source. The other one is we got to set a budget for our feed and, you know, I think that's all going to be relative to your goals. Uh, a lot of young people get into this and says, hey, I'm just going to go buy the best show feed period and, and move forward. And I don't think that's probably the best mentality. Um, if you're just buying the cheapest lamb you can get your hands on, there's no reason to spend three, four hundred dollars in feed on that sheep. Um, you need to have some genetic potential behind that lamb to make that feed quality valid. And, and if you're not going to do that, and your goal is just to get a sheep to the finish line at the county fair that's fine we, we we appreciate people that that it's just the experience of doing it and doing it at that level and i think that's an important phase of 4-h is to have that experience but we don't need to over budget just because everybody else is doing it so uh the co-ops and usually have three or four different tiers of feeds if you have one of those locally and it may be as simple as making your own custom mix and, and finding a um, something there that you can use all summer to make it economics for you so so i, I think Lay out your goals. Now, if you're going out and spending top money on a weather or you land a show all year and you're going to plan on going to, to not only your county fair, but state fair and junior livestock show, probably need to up the ante as well because it doesn't do any good to go spend you know thousand dollars on a lamb and then feed them the cheapest feed co-op can put out. Um, people do it both ways and the success rate's very minimal on those. Uh, occasionally you'll find that really cheap deal and, and find a really nice sheep that's just green at the beginning and and you can feed them up. But, you know, that doesn't happen all that often. So so we need to make a balance between those two. And, and I think budgeting is important. And, and you know, and sometimes money, I hate to say it's not really, you know, the, the deciding factor, but we need to make sure they pair together because I've had some people come back and say, hey, this sheep didn't grow right on this feed and, you know, and just kind of discuss some things with me, even if it was my own. And I I said, well, what kind of feed was it? And they told me and I'm like, well, that's not going to work in this situation. So we need to make sure that we do that as well. The other thing at the beginning that I am pretty much against is additives really early in a feed in a sheep's diet. I think the first 30 to 60 days on your property, they should be there to grow and try to get them some weight, um, especially before the uh, hot season gets into us because we're going to see some slowdown. And I think adding those higher priced additives, A, is a budgetary challenge. And then two, I think you get into the position where you're maybe 
um, putting things in that lamb that their body's really not ready to digest and take on. And so I think when you start moving forward with that, um, there's some things that we'll discuss here in a little bit, but I think in terms of additives, fine, you know, put them off the side, put away, you know, put them away and just find a good base feed. And you'll probably see just as much performance and just as much response from a good feed than you will see, a, especially a cheap feed with additives. And honestly, like I said, you can put a high price feed with a lot of additives in front of them and actually just been wasting money. So you need to make sure that you're seeing some response to those. And, and I would say once we hit that 100 to 120 pounds, then we can start seeing some change in what we're trying to accomplish with that. So so I think that's that that's a philosophical thing for me. I just don't think that's good for us to move forward um, to use those additives like that. I, I think that's just kind of a waste necessarily. So um, I, I think once we get to that position, though, it's like, okay, now what do we do to this sheep? Well, now we got our feed, we got our lamb, we're coming home, what are we going to do? And I think your first two weeks are probably as important as anything. I know a lot of people say, oh, we're going to have a crash anyways, they're coming from home. I, I don't think that can, needs to be the case. And, and I think if you work with your breeder, you can do that. So, so there's a couple ways we can do that transition. And I, I think the first thing we need to do is what, you know, what our lamb weighs when they get to our property, because that's going to be relative um, to how much feed we need to get to them. And I have two ways I can work with people. And I, I've told them both this, and a lot of it depends on your resources. So uh, one of the easy methods for me to get a young person to start right on feed, because um, a lot of times our lambs are coming off full feed before they get to um, our individuals. Because like I said, we're trying to put grow into them as much as we can. One of them is a 15 minute rule. So find something that you can measure feed out in, maybe a gallon can, maybe it's a certain scoop you have, whatever it is and put a quantity of feed in front of your sheep um, and make sure to see what they clean up in 15 minutes and then measure it back out. You'll find out that lambs in most cases within 15 minutes, if they are hungry, will eat their appropriate amount of diet at that time. And once you figure out that measurement, then you can determine what you need to move forward and, and just start increasing from that. You know, that may take a couple feedings before you really get it fine tuned, but it's really a good way to get them started. The other way, and if you have a scales and really know what your weight of your lamb is and know how to make that work, you can honestly go through the process of doing a 4% measurement. And I think that's also a good way to do that is that 4% of their body weight is kind of what we're looking at for a lamb consumption for the most period during or most of the periods during their development. And obviously, as they get bigger and older, that it's going to increase. And you're going to see, you know, you listen to me here in a second, and I'm going to tell you about a couple things that we can move forward on. Um, but a lot of it's going to be involving weight because we got to know the weight of our sheep to, to do calculations. And so so I think in terms of that process, in terms of that, those are the two ways you can kind of start lambs off in terms of quantity and then keep moving them forward. Um, I've had some young people say, well, you just said keep going like this and this. Well, you got to increase from there moving forward because you as um, as you start to get a transition, you know, the transition period gets over. You can move forward with increasing that sheep. OK, um, I think it's also important, like I said, to find a consistent measuring tool. So that way, everybody you work with during the year at your property who's going to be feeding your sheep, we all know that we want the, the, the showman to be doing this. However, we know sometimes there's a ball game and they're gone an evening. Substitute for you. You need to make sure that those people that are helping you know exactly how much to feed and when to do it. And I think that's two things that's really overlooked is that we want to make sure that. So, so we have a couple scoops at our house that we've measured up and we know exactly each scoop is going to be one pound of each feed. So we can tell somebody that maybe even isn't a little. Measure of feed, we know that. Um, now, when you go talk to your judge at the county fair and showmanship, this is one of my pet peeves is I always have people come up and I ask them, so how much feed you're feeding your lamb? And they say three scoops. That doesn't work. You got to know how many pounds of feed you're feeding each day. So so you need to know the calculation, but it's just a little trick to the trade to make sure your person knows what they can do to help you out that as well. The other thing that is we train. I've been involved with sheep now for 40 years. I hate to date myself, but I've definitely been in the sheep world for 40 years. I started at seven. So now that gets you to, to know, unfortunately, how old I am. But I was lucky to have, have someone that really was a big impact on the nutritionist for the longest time. He said, Bill, the most overlooked thing is good, clean. Again, 
but it makes sense. If the water accessibility of the sheep is not right, the rest of their intake on everything else is going to go down. So I say, you know, have a good size tub relative to how many sheep you're feeding in a pen and make sure that water is easily changed out, you know, at least once every other day, if not every day, depending on the temperature, how clean it is. You know, we have some pens that are outside for some of our I mean, it really needs to be to be fresh for them. And if you do that, I think that'll keep them on feed almost as well as, as a good feed that they're really impressed with. Um, so those are kind of things to get us started. Once we get to that point, and that's probably where most of you are right now. We're in the first week of May. We've made it through check-in or weigh-in. We maybe even been to a couple spring shows. So we know where our sheep lies in terms of weight. Um, we also know, like you said, you know, maybe where our goal is. And, and that's ultimately where we need to be right now. We're the first week of May. We all know where our county fair dates are, or we, at least we should, if our extension agents and everybody's got together and got those published, we should know within a week or so, at least, of what our end point is. This is a good time to be doing some calculations and saying, my lamb weighs 100 pounds. I have a county fair August 1st. How much does my lamb need to gain every day between now and then? And I think that is something that, you know, everybody goes, well, I don't have a scale. Well, it, it stinks not to have a scale. And, and in this day and age, though, if you're going to be competitive and that's a goal, it would be worth trying to find a set of scales that you have access to at least once a week, if not every other week at the late least. Um, that way you can see if something's not happening the way it's supposed to, because lambs should gain a half pound to three quarters of a pound a day, um, depending on their pattern and their their performance level and, and time of year and, and some other some other things that are just genetic that we all can't control. But that is a really important piece is to, to keep track of them, because if you start to see one lamb tailoring off, you can go and start changing maybe some dietary things with that one particular lamb to make sure it is. And it may be as simple as that, you know, um, whether you do independent lamb feeding or if you do a, a pen feeding situation, we do pen feeding for the most part, but we pair lambs up according to weight. So if we have a couple lightweight ones that are going to junior livestock show versus a couple going to county fair. We just keep them together because I do think competitiveness amongst them as lambs eating is good, um, especially early in the summer when we're when or the springtime here where we're, we really don't aren't fine tuning yet. But that does give us some opportunity to give them some competitiveness and those good lambs usually eat better in that kind of environment. So I do think that is uh, is a way to start moving forward, though. But you got to know your lambs weight now and you got to be able to calculate, OK, I need to gain my lamb needs to gain 30 pounds between now and my county fair to make weight. We had weigh-in last night. We have a lamb that weighed 105 pounds. Our fares August 1st, um, or, the first, or the first week of August, we know we need to put 40 to 50 pounds on those sheep. And you know what? I think we're right on cue with those bigger lambs. Um, actually, they may be... ...growth and late growth. So, so we need to know our goal. Are we trying to get to county fair? Are we trying to get to state fair? Are we trying to get to junior livestock show, royal, et cetera? Um, for people that may be watching this video in particular, I am guessing this is about getting to one end goal and being done. Uh, there's a lot of different worlds in terms of we live in, in terms of getting sheep to a certain way and then holding them and doing things with them. I'm not here to teach you tricks of the forte. Um, and once again, that's so lamb dependent on what it is. I, I'm not going to teach you that over the computer here today because you need to realize what your goal is now and, and aim towards it. I think that's appropriate livestock husbandry method um, in terms of doing that. That's a philosophy of ours. We like to have lightweight lambs and push them harder than to have heavyweight lambs that we have to hold. But, um, you know, for like 30 or 60 days. So we want to make sure that so that's why our lambs are born after January. My kids go out, feed them and, and move forward. So. Um, but now that we're the first week of May, the other thing that is really important is to know your sheep. And what I mean is that you need to know what they need to perform at the level we want to do. And that goes back to that genetic concept of, of talking to your breeder. Um, are these lambs going to put extra uh, weight on later? Or are they going to be early maturing and put the weight on earlier? We need to know where we're at right now, because if we have an early maturing one and they're already behind on weight, man, we, we've got some work to do. And so we need to make sure we're paying attention. Whereas if they're late maturing and as long as their frame size is developing, 
we know we can add some weight to them down the road as they start to develop. So, so that's where that genetic knowledge of your, of your sheep is going to make sense. And this year we got a whole different set of genetics in our barn and, and we're treating them quite a bit differently already because of that. So, um, also, a lot of you may have been out to spring shows already, and I think it's important to understand the composition of your sheep at this stage of the game. If you've already got a lamb that is too fat, we need to understand how we're going to start to pull back on some things and adjust the diet. And if they're too green, and I, that was a term that me as a showman always hated, and I know that other people do as well. But it basically, in other words, to say they're skinny, they're not there yet. So maybe they're not a show readiness uh, show ready. But what do we need to do to change those things? And so whether they're too green and thin or if they're too fat, we know that at this point. And hopefully maybe we've had some outside opinions, whether that's a show judge or maybe it's a show friend at a show saying, hey, you know, you need to really get some extra weight on this sheep now to get a more competitive if you want to continue showing the spring. Or, hey, wait a second, the sheep's right on cue to get ready for the county fair and, and, and if that's your goal. So, so I think having some insight to what your lamb looks like now. And so you need to be able to not be barn blind and go out and look at your lamb relative to the world and say, OK, is this sheep thin enough or too thin or too fat or just right for where we want to go? And and sometimes that takes an outside opinion and sometimes we don't like those. But we do need to understand that our our sheep need to be looked at by other people. And that's a good, good way to do that. Um, and that before, then what are we trying to do weight wise? Are we trying to gain a half pound, a quarter pound, three quarters of a pound? Because, you know, maybe we have a 125 pounder right now and we know our fair is the first of August. We only know we need about 25 more pounds. And that was so. So that's where, once again, doing those weekly weigh ins and so forth will help your cause. Um, what do we do during the summer, though, to keep them on track? I, and I think that's another phase of, of some simplicity that can happen for sure. Um, I wish when I was selling sheep to a kid, I could just sell them a kit. I want this many bags of feed and I want these wormers given at this time and just put it in a package and give it to a kid. But but it doesn't work like that. And so. change that we um because when those parasites are attacking the inside of our animal they're taking a lot of that energy um and nutrients that we're providing and just kicking it out the back side of the sheep so so i suggest two to three wormings i usually just make it easy may one june one july one um, make sure that uh, qualifies with your withdrawal dates and whatever you're using um the ones i usually use is a, a travazol um sheep wormer that you can get from Valley Vet or from Mid-States Wool if they're still in business by the time you order. I think they're about ready to close their doors um, or your tractor supply store, or any of those places. And then we also use Ivamac, obviously. And so those are kind of the, the primary ones that we do as well. But whatever good sheep wormer is available, it kind of stinks that a lot of times that um, you only got two or three head and maybe a whole bottle will serve 50. Work with some local um, showmen and, and try to get a bottle that each of you can share and, and utilize amongst yourselves. Because I know that seems really expensive to buy a bottle by yourself. And it does, but make sure to get access to some warmer. And one of the things that was always really neat at our county growing up, we'd always go get a veterinarian uh, and they'd donate the, the warmer for the May 1 check-in. And so we all know everybody's sheep got at least warm once. But honestly, the way um, things are going in our world now, we just have enough uh, warm pressure in the ground. Almost everybody's livestock facilities have some. We need to make sure that we warm, like I said, a couple different times. And we also need to do it with different products. Don't use the same product every time. Uh, there's some resistance buildup and, and different types of worms that different products are better at. And I think it's really important to go and um, uh, change that that wormer, especially the middle one, from what the other ones are, just to make sure we're we're knocking everything out of that sheep system. And and last year we had a, a really heavy worm load and on some long, young lambs. It wasn't any of our show sheep, but we didn't really catch it. And it was amazing the detriment that has. So so I do think that's important to do that as well. Um, as we get into the summer feedings, I think a lot of times it's easy to get out of schedule. I know we're out of school and so a lot of people are around, but it's like, yeah, I can go feed at six in the morning or nine or 10, maybe do it different times. I, absolutely horrible. It's my kids do a lot better job of feeding correctly during school when they have to go out before school and 
really important to keep a schedule with your sheep. And so whatever that is, set it and try to stay within an hour or two because their diet is going to just be like yours where we usually eat breakfast at seven to eight noon for, for lunch. And then we eat dinner at a certain time. You'll find and that their diets will change like that as well if you if you don't keep that schedule. So I think it's really important to keep on. Sheep do not eat well when it's hot, especially if you're trying to give them large quantities and trying to push them. You need to do it when it's cool. Um, if you're having problems with lambs eating, though, there is some philosophies and some um, protocols in the back where people will change over and do it three times a day and do a little bit smaller amount and try to keep them hungry. Um, I've done that before, but it, it's not a consistent thing that we do in our household right now. Most of our sheep have ate well enough the first two or three years of my, my kids' show world. So, um, I, But I do think that's a trick that you can try if for some reason your sheep are being finicky on eating a quantity of feed. So, um, But you need to, once again, keep your calculations, understand how much they're eating, and, and, and do that as well. And so I think, you know, doing the cool part of the day, keeping consistency will help your cause a lot as well. Um, I mentioned this earlier, but I'm going to say it again. Obviously, in May, first part of June, I call it the cool growing season, just like grass. Uh, when it's cool outside, sheep eat better. We want to make sure to get some weight on them then because we get to July and it gets hot. Uh, we can see some crash and burn no matter what we do. And so we want to make sure to get them within reasonable weights at that time. So maybe we're just doing a modest weight gain in July. You know, usually at the end of a growing pattern for an animal of any species, they should be gaining more towards the end because of their size. But we just know that July and leading up to county fair is not the prime growing season for livestock because of the heat. And so a couple things. One, we need to know where we're at once again, make sure we're doing what we're doing, but also try to accommodate them if we can. And so once again, that's feeding when it's cool, but also making sure we provide shade, fans, whatever we need to do to make sure that we keep them in play. I think that's something so um, to do that. So obviously we're just kind of jamming information at you here. And then, you know, we're now here, let's say we get to July one. Some of you may be a week out from fair at that time. So you need to back accordingly, but some of us may be looking at 30 days and that's where a bulk of the county fairs are going to be landing is that third week of July to the first week of August. And I call it closing time. This is where we can start making some adjustments. This is where I would say we start looking at potentially independent feeding if we need to. This is where the additives can provide some adjustments for us. Maybe it's an adjustment in our feed as a whole just because we want to make sure that we do some things. So, so once again, though, this is going to be relative. I'm, I'm, I can't hammer this enough. We need to know how much our sheep weighs and we need to be able to understand their composition. If we have a sheep that weighs on July 1, 140 pounds and is already fat, we need to probably total um, intake on them down to, you know, a little bit, um, maybe more like two to 3% of their body weight, try to keep them back down to what we call a maintenance diet. But we also probably need to increase the protein percentage in that diet. And that can be done with an additive. If you can find a, a show rep of some kind, a, a feed rep that can help you find that right additive to, to maybe burn some fat down, that's maybe a good way to do that. Um, but we need to do it with a smaller quantity of feed as well, just once again, keep a maintenance diet in front of them. But if we're at 100 pounds and we're green and we're doing some things the other way, maybe it's to try to increase the diet or maybe it's just to increase the calories on the per pound base. Caloric intake um, for those sheep maybe increases their. And to put a little bit more fat cover on them. Um, maybe it's something, you know, that's sweet as well, just to increase intake. Um, so there's two, two virtues there that we got to look at is, are we too fat? Are we too thin, too light, too heavy? What are we going to do to adjust accordingly? That's where I like to start doing independent feeding if we need to. Once again, if your sheep kind of pair up and you can do it in a pair, I still think that's better but having a set of feed pens ready to go. That way each lamb can do it. Cause we do have some slow eaters in the pen. We have one right now that I can already tell is gonna be a slow eater. She's gonna have to eat on her own when we get there because to get those last 30 days the way we want her, we're gonna have to, to, to let her do it. Cause she just, she eats slow. She eats her quantity and she'll keep eating in front of her. She just eats it slower. And so she's just a little finicky in terms of that, but she likes the food. Um, the other thing we can do at closing time and, and, you know, the start of it, once again, if our sheep are a little underweight and we've just noticed they're just not eating well enough, 
maybe it's the time to adjust the kind of feed we're feeding. And maybe we don't like what our results are and, and so forth, because once again, they're just not eating it. Well, 30 days is enough time to make an adjustment and do that. Uh, any less than that, you may be doing more harm than good. So I, I do believe that, you know, if you've been feeding just a generic mix and you want to move forward with something better, that last 30 days, a good feed can still not necessarily save the day all the time, but can definitely come into play. And this is going to go back to your original concept. Are we, is it a goal to just get a sheep to wait? Is it trying to make them the best one possible? Does it fit in our budget? We got to do use all those things to do it. Um, sometimes it's it's to save the day to get them to wait just so they can make the sale at the fair. Um, I've had people come up and say, Bill, I don't know what's going on. My sheep's only weighing 75 pounds. And I just go, so how much are you feeding them? And I don't understand. And I look at them, I said, well, you're only feeding two pounds a day. They're not, they're, they're barely getting a maintenance diet, let alone anything to grow on. So a lot of times it's just not understanding and we need to make sure that we're doing that. So, um, because, you know, if a lamb goes and, you know, eats four to five pounds a day, they should be gaining a half pound or whatever. But I've had people try to feed them two or three pounds thinking that, that they're going to gain enough and it doesn't work like that. So, so we got to do our math, keep our math, keep our book, keep a log. It'll help your cause moving forward. And so, um, once again, you know, and it may be one of those things that you're you don't get barn blind. And if you don't know what that term means, it means that you see your sheep every day. You're out there working with them. You're doing your program of exercise and your showmanship practice and you're not seeing the difference. But maybe there's a difference going on that we're not catching and it could be good or bad. And I think it's good that, hey, get your breeder to come over and take a look at them. We always offer that up if somebody's really having a challenge or they really just don't know, especially our young showman. Call them, call your breeder, call a friend that knows something that says, hey, come look at these. I know you haven't seen them for 30 days. Tell me where we're at. And it, I think that insight can provide you a lot of justification for changes. And so um, and then hopefully once you once you get that justification, you can decide what you want to do. Um, the last piece of this then is that last week. And this is prepping for the fair. What are we really trying to accomplish once again is our goal. But that's a stressful time because one, you guys all have a lot of projects going on, getting ready for the fair. You're maybe going to get out of whack with feeding routine. You need, need to prioritize that and keep that routine stable. We also know that we're going to do some extra clipping and some extra exercise potentially, um, depending on what that sheep needs. All those things change their, their intake. And so we got to make sure that, that we do that. They may shrink down on us. Um, so we got to keep the basics in play, keep us keep it consistent. And then as we get ready to, to get to the fair, we got to understand that, you know, sometimes just that that 30 minute trip to the county fairground is enough to to make or break us. And so we want to feed intake for the couple of days before the fair. So that way, when we get there, we can just just keep them on task as we get to the fair. And it's really easy to get tied up with other things there at the fairgrounds. But those last two days, you can take a month's worth of work and throw it down the drain if you don't keep them on track at the fair. And so you need to make sure that that you still feed the same time, make sure there's good water at the fair. And, you know, you do maybe notice this. And, and one of the tricks that I will pass on that we have never had to use, but I can understand it, is there's a difference in water quality from your place to the fair. It doesn't mean one's better than the other one. It's just different. And sometimes you'll have city water versus a well. And so there's some some minerals and some things treatment wise that's been done to that water and sheep just don't like it. And maybe your well water home went straight out of the ground and, and colder and some things. It's OK to take your own water to the fair. That's one thing. That's one way to adjust it. The other thing to do, and some people will do this, is just put a little flavoring in your water as you lead up to the fair those last couple of weeks. Something that, you know, you think they're like, especially if you're using any kind of drench or, or that kind of protocol, it, and something like a Gatorade flavoring or, or whatever it may be. You can put that in the water before you get to the fair and have them start naturally drinking it out of the bucket. Well, once you start to have a water problem at the fair, you can use that flavoring and that will mask a lot of what you'll come across. And so they'll just keep on going. And I think that helps a couple of ways. One, you don't have to stick a drench around them to get some extra nutrients, but you also have that ability to keep that, that water interest from that sheet there. And, and it, you maybe don't see that setback. Um, Cause I think you'll see a lot of times, especially at spring shows and jackpot shows where your sheep just don't drink water that day. Usually it's because there's something that water is just a little different and they just don't like it as much. Um, 
So as you get to the fair, I think think those two days are, are really important because you'll check in on Wednesday or Tuesday or whatever it is, and you show don't show till Thursday. You can crash and burn in two days very quickly, and if a lamb doesn't eat and drink right, man, you you can get yourself in a world of hurt and have that lamb look absolutely not what you think they should look like. And so um, every animal is different, but I do think that's really important. So so once again, kind of going back and, and doing a quick little review here. Um, like I said, I don't want to bore you guys with information, but, you know, obviously it starts from the beginning and where you get your sheep from and, and who you're working with and the genetics you have. We need to collect all that information there so that way we have our baseline and we know what to start with. We got to have a good transition period to make sure that sheep gets a good start when we get to our place um, because we really don't have time for setbacks because we want to make sure we're moving forward consistently, um, keeping things in place. We need to have a good consistent summer routine that includes the diet, the weigh-ins, wormers, all those things. like to walk out and say my sheep could get drugged into a show ring today there's a lot of philosophies out there that'll come in and people will start to go and say hey i want want to hold this one i want to do this and that you can figure that out on your own that that's not the goal of today i don't believe at least in my mind i want to make sure that sheep's starting you from april 1 or may 1 up to your county fair um but you need to know your sheep to do whatever you want to do and so that's knowing what they're gaining knowing how much intake they are and then starting to make those decisions as we get to closing time. I think closing time is actually as important as the beginning, but we got to make sure we make adjustments off of what we've got in front of us. And then the final two days, um, we'll call it show time. We got to be prepared for that. And so make those minor adjustments. And um, But I think if you find consistency in your feed, feed quality, water quality, um, know how to handle your genetics, I think you're going to find a lot of good things. So, so with that being said, that's really all I've got today, Kelsey. I know that was nothing too exciting, but honestly, hopefully that that's some information to help some young people out and get this project started the right way. Yes. Awesome. Thank you very much, Bill. It was uh, really helpful. And I think it will be especially valuable to those green members or young members who are just getting started. And we appreciate your time. 4-H members, I would remind you that if you've got questions about feeding your market lambs, you can always reach out to your county extension agent. If they don't have um, the information that you need, then I guarantee you they know somebody who does, or feel free to reach out to me and I can connect you um, with Bill or with someone else who could definitely help you out. So with that, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Bill, for sharing your expertise with us today, and we will see you next month, 4-Hers.